Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at something that's very important to many viewers, and that's leakage of radiation from microwave ovens. Microwave ovens were invented right around the end of World War II. Some say it was invented by an American engineer, Percy Spencer, and others say it was invented by the Germans. But one thing is certain, the technology came about from radar. The way microwave ovens work is very simple. You're using high-powered radio waves to heat up the food to cook it. Inside the oven, to the right wall by the control panel, is a piece called a magnetron. Now the magnetron is just like an antenna on any other transmitter. And what it does, it produces those microwaves, very high power. This is a 1500 watt oven. And you have to figure there are some losses inside these ovens between the high voltage transformer to drive the magnetron, which requires around 2,500 volts. And you also have losses in the magnetron. So out of the 1,500 watt input power from your AC line, you're maybe getting 1,000 watts of radio frequency energy coming out of that magnetron. But it's still more than enough to get the job done. Over the years, there's been a lot of debate whether or not using a microwave oven is healthy for people. Some say when you use this to cook your food, it changes the food in such a way that it creates carcinogenic substances. Others say no, it's just fine. And the United States tends to have very high limits of exposure to microwaves that are considered safe. And if you go to Europe, Europe says no, we think that there's a problem with microwaves. And their limits are one one hundredth of what we have here in the United States. So it all depends who you talk to which testing was done, which country, whether or not this is safe or unsafe. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is testing the microwave oven to see what kind of radiation exposure we're getting. I'm going to show you how to check the door seal all the way around. And I'm also going to test to see how far back you should stand from the front of the microwave oven while it's in operation. First, let me open up the door. There's a couple of things I want to show you. Okay, this is what it looks like on the inside of the oven. And right over here, this cover is called a waveguide cover. The waveguide cover is made out of mica. It tolerates extreme heat and it protects the aperture of the magnetron from when you're cooking food, that nothing gets all over it. And you can see what it looks like behind that cover right over here. You can see the opening on the end of the magnetron. That's the aperture. That's where the microwaves come out. You can see the metal plate in front and the whole lower portion that slopes down. That is the waveguide. It directs the energy right into the center of the oven where the food is cooking. Now the one thing you never want to do is cook with nothing inside the oven because what can happen, the energy can reflect back into the magnetron causing damage. You also never want to place metal objects like foil inside the oven when cooking. Doing so can create a lot of sparks and heat and damage the oven cavity. Inside the oven, you're going to see these openings right here on both sides, and that's to allow the oven cavity to cool when the fan is running, and to allow the light from the bulb, which is mounted on the opposite side, to shine into the oven cavity. Here's a look at the opposite side, and you can see the openings on the back left side. Some of you may be wondering, how does the high-powered microwaves stay inside this compartment and not pass through the door? Let me explain. Now to help you understand, we have these three waveforms, and one at the bottom is going to be an FM radio. So around 100 megahertz. The one in the middle could be like a transmitter for a doorbell, three or 400 megahertz. And the one at the top would be your microwave oven, which is right around 2.4 gigahertz or 2,450 megahertz. Now the wavelength for an FM radio, which would be the full wave, from this point here to there would be around 300 centimeters or 9.8 feet between this point and that point. Some of you may have seen years ago when they did an experiment inside of a cage using an FM radio, they would have it turned on outside the cage, receiving a very clear signal, listening to music, and then as soon as they stepped into the cage, the radio station vanished. There was nothing but static. And the reason for that is when you're inside of a cage that has maybe four or five inch openings in the walls and it completely surrounds your body, this wavelength is way too long, all right? So that was almost 9.8 feet 
and 300 centimeters. So the opening inside the cage is way too small to allow this waveform to pass. And that's why the signal's lost when you're inside the cage and you cannot hear the radio. Microwaves can be blocked the exact same way. The only difference is the holes in the cage, or in this case the door, need to be much smaller because the wavelength is much shorter. The wavelength for a microwave oven at 2450 megahertz is right around 12.4 centimeters or just over 4.8 inches. Okay, let's take a look at the door. Right here you can see the mesh in the door. The holes are very tiny, only about a millimeter and a half in diameter, but they're 80 times smaller than the wavelength for the microwaves created in this oven. So the microwaves will not be able to pass through this door. The one thing that you are going to see is that the microwaves, even though they're going to be contained in the oven cavity, you're going to have some scattering of microwaves just past the doorway. And as you move further and further away from the microwave oven door, the amount of microwave radiation is going to become less and less. Testing is typically done within two inches of the surface of the microwave oven door and all around the edges of the door. And you want to make sure it's a very low reading. Now there are limits by the U.S. government as to how much radiation can pass through this screen or around the edges of the doors. And believe it or not, it's a very high number. I think it's around 5 milliwatts. And when you check, it's usually in the microwatts, not in the milliwatts. Before I do some testing, let's take a look at the inside of the door first. In order to prevent the leakage of microwaves, you want to make sure the surface where the door contacts is extremely clean. If you have any dried food on here, what's going to happen when you close the door, it's going to leave a little bit of a space and it doesn't take much. You can have a half a millimeter space between the oven and the door and what's going to happen, you're going to have a fair amount of leakage. So make sure you keep the surface very clean. Over here, you can see there's a slightly raised edge on the door, metal, goes all the way around and you want to make sure that is perfectly clean. Like I just said, if there's any food, it's going to prevent the door from closing all the way. Now there's two other reasons why the door does not close fully, allowing the oven to leak microwave radiation, and that would be a problem with the latch not fully engaging, pulling the door in tightly, or a problem with the hinge. If the hinge is very worn or not adjusted properly, the door will not close tightly against the surface, and the radiation will leak out. Okay, let me show you what I'm going to be using to perform the test to ensure that we have accurate results. In the past on my channel, you saw me use this tri-field meter. It checks for electromagnetic, electric fields, and radio waves. And you saw me use this electronic tester here. This is made by Must Tool. And what this one does, it looks for electromagnetic fields as well as electric fields. The problem with this tester it's not going to be good for checking leakage on a microwave oven because it does not do a good job at differentiating between electromagnetic energy and a radio wave. So what's going to happen, you could bring this close to the microwave oven and it may pick up the electromagnetic field from the circuit board mounted transformer or even the high voltage transformer inside the microwave oven and it's going to skew the reading. So this one will detect everything, but the problem is you're not going to know if the reading is from microwave radiation or if it's from an electromagnetic field. So we will not be using this one. And this one here on the left is much more sensitive and a more expensive unit than this one here. And it does have a radio microwave setting, but I notice it also likes to grab some of that electromagnetic from the transformers that are mounted inside the unit. So let me show you what I'm going to use. The tester that I'm going to be using is this one right over here. It's designed specifically for testing leakage on microwave ovens. The unit was calibrated at 2450 megahertz. Might be hard to see, but right down over here, it says 2450. And you can use it up to three and a half gigahertz. If I push this button right here, now you're on a full scale between 50 megahertz and 3.5 gigahertz. So for the oven, we're going to use the 2450 megahertz setting, right over there. And on that setting, we're going to have very good calibration and accurate testing results. 
higher end units like this one also include calibration certificates so you know the unit has been calibrated properly. A quick look, you can see there's a line right here. As the radiation level increases, you're going to see these lines increase from the left and move all the way to the right. Anything above one milliwatt is going to sound the alarm. Over here, you could choose minimum and maximum. That'll do min max, it'll subtract and give you the reading between both. If you want to turn that back off, you just push and hold and now it's off. If there's a setting you'd like to save, push the hold button and you're done. See so it says DH and now it's off. You can also zero out the unit before using it. It's a very nice unit, it's well made and it also has on the back an area that you can put it on a tripod to monitor an area and in here it uses a 9 volt battery. Now it's a single axis unit, so on this face right here, you want to make sure it's facing the source of microwaves. So if this is the door, you're going to put this right in front of the door about two inches away. And then we're going to check all the door edges, pointing this directly at the edge of the door. If you see a reading that's 0 .010, that means 10 microwatts. If it's 0 .100, that's 100 microwatts. We're going to check the front of the door first, and then around the edges. Here we go. Keep it about two inches away. A little higher in this area. to show you the radiation that's going to pass through the screen. It's not too much. Very low. Alright, so now let's take a look over here on that seam. Whoop, there you go. That's pretty good. Now we're going to go over the top. on that edge. Now the side. Now let's check along the bottom. And as you just saw, the levels of leakage were extremely low. For the last test, I want to see how far away from the door we have to be to get that reading down to zero. Here we go. All right, staying at three. right there. Okay, let me measure that and see how far. For this to show zero, I was eight feet away from the front of this door. So as long as you're not right up against this door, you're about a foot away at least, you're going to be okay, unless you have a problem with the seal on your microwave oven door. A super handy gadget to let you know if your oven is leaking. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos that interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.